let's uh, let's begin uh, by a review from the past sessions. So today would be uh, somehow the final session of this course, and tomorrow we will be having our uh, final test or final assignment. Let's put it that way. And let's go. So we got to know a little bit uh, about the book, its context, uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, how popular it has been since its publication in 1960, and how critics are having like opposing views on the topics discussed in this very novel. We had a like a small discussion about uh, Harper Lee and uh, how her life impacted the creation of the story. So what we know about it is that like Scout and uh, Harper Lee had similar childhood uh, and uh, she's been inspired by people around her to write this very book. And one of the reasons is that um, she was living in Alabama at the heyday of right, uh, civil rights movement and a lot was going on uh, and uh, it was right after the the um, ending of the first world war and people were struggling a lot and um, racial issues uh, issues related to slavery had made them even worse okay so historical background great depression civil rights movement and the kkk okay yesterday we discussed form and genre form as the style and structure of the book uh, how like it was supposed to be a series of short stories and how editors read the story and how um lee had to rewrite the book three times to finally have a unified cohesive novel in which she had more chance and more room to expand on her characters however it was a very difficult thing for her to do she admitted to herself and we know that everything has a chronological order but in a way uh, like like scout is looking back on past as as if she's having flashbacks and telling us the story and the genre coming of age or buildings roman and there we had gothic fiction and southern gothic fiction which would uh, we would attribute to the genre of this novel which would be like the classification the type of the book and for um today we are going to talk about the philosophy of the book so what do we mean when we talk about the philosophy do we mean the ideas do we mean like like what the uh, the writer thought of back then uh, what does it mean? When we talk about philosophy, one of the things that would come to our mind is how this book inspired people back then. And even today, after so many years, we're reading uh, the book, we're discussing it, and uh, it, it may relate to uh, the events going on in our modern life. So when we discuss philosophy in, a, for example, novel, in a short story or in a poem, we actually, uh, we are looking for the way literature influences life and inspires the way people think about abstract ideas, about their beliefs, about their behaviors, about their um, like attitudes. And it's not about like, not, not only about the, the setting of the book, right? So 1960s, are we only talking about the 1960s, how this book impacted people living during that time no it's about us as well like you were discussing in your first assignment the other day the reception of the novel why has it been so popular after so many years well despite the uh, controversies about the writer and about the topic of the book because we can relate it to the life we are living in right so uh, what scholars have found about uh, this very book is that Harper Lee is trying to tell us about the life in the South in the early 20th century. And it's not it was not just about what people did, uh, but what they thought of and how they were receiving everything. If you remember correctly, when we were discussing historical background, one of the um, like things that Harper Lee shows in this very novel is the um, <clears throat> importance of slavery's topic right people back then thought of slavery slavery as an integral part of their society and economy so this is what lee is trying to show us 
not only what people did, like the KKK, but how they uh, thought of things, how they felt about things, like the characters in this very novel. So this is like the general understanding of philosophy and how we can find philosophy in a novel, right? Let's go and talk about like two of the philosophies discussed by Harper Lee. There are more, uh, but we're going to discuss two of them, the two most important ones. Racism. So back then, racism was a philosophy, right? People were entitled to have slaves. Uh, some people think, some scholars think that, okay, the work itself is racist. Why? Because it, it's enacting racist beliefs. The Black people in this um, uh, book, they are like, like um, standing outside of the plot they are being stereotyped they they cannot take action they're waiting for others to do something for them and people are like like scholars are criticizing this very um issue so is the book itself um racist or no um harper lee was trying to show something more she was trying to tell us that okay black people do not have a voice during the time this book was written, 1960s. Maybe she was being ironic about it. So it depends on the way you read the story, whether the racism is being actually enacted in the book or no. Um, like she, she's criticizing it in her own way, right? By being ironic somehow. So this is one of the uh, philosophies we can attribute to this very book. Just so you know that there wouldn't be only one philosophy, there would be many in any any um, given work. Another one which is like very interesting to me is the gender roles. So um, how roles are defined for men, for women? How are uh, like, like the characters, how are they taking actions? Is Scout acting like a lady, air quotation marks? Um, is there someone trying to tell her this is not the way you should be behaving? She's a tomboy, right? She spends time outdoor. Uh, she has um, like friends who are boys. She likes to um, uh, like do whatever they do. She always wears pants. And uh, there are some people like, like her uh, aunt, I guess, uh, telling her, yeah, this is not the right way to behave because you're a girl, you're a lady. So how these de roles are defined, is, is um, Harper Lee um, questioning them? Is she um, uh, like celebrating these rules? What is she doing? So again, it would be your reading the way you read it. My reading was that she was criticizing the gender roles by, by creating such a character because she was very similar to um, Scout herself. What about the, the, the other um, characters, um, like, like, for example, who are in uh, power positions, like Atticus, Jem, are there only male characters who have power, who are strong in this very book? Or no, we have strong female characters like Cal. So what we know is that, like, there are societal expectations from women back then, I mean, like, they, there were, um, like, like, a lot of expectations from them. They needed to have feminine behavior, right? They needed to, um, like, Yuki, if you remember from Pride and Prejudice, like, in the 18th century, they couldn't go to school, they couldn't take up jobs. The only thing they could have done was to sit at home, read a roman romance novel, do some nibble work, and wait for a person to come and ask them uh, for their hand. So that was it, like, like uh, like 50 years 60 years before the publication of this book these very um uh, like like uh, expectations these very rules were being questioned by women by the society that okay this is not how you would define a woman this is not what their roles and during this time it's like 1960s we know that feminism came into being 1966 i mean the word the term feminism so there have been a lot of movements and uh, protests going on this is one of the other things um harper lee is trying to show to us gender roles as for other um philosophies we would say that um okay like like the importance of education religion wisdom and a lot more but these are the two important ones i wanted to discuss as for this book tell me whether you have any questions or any ideas no no 
fantastic. Thank you. Let's go on and talk about themes. Before we go on and like talk about themes and what they are and what themes you can find, um, tell me, what does a theme mean when we talk about like a story, a poem or a novel? What does it mean? Yes, please. Uh, it means, you know, um, the, the general idea of the whole short story or, or um, whatever the book is or, or a novel. Okay, perfect. The general idea or ideas. Thank you, Artie. Um, Yuki? Um, is it like an idea or the message or like the general message that the author mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. piece of writing is trying to convey? Like, mm -hmm. for Definitely. example, like for maybe like one of them could be like struggle or family, no, like for example, family or injustice. Uh -huh. and justice. Fantastic family. And the, yes, justice. Yes, exactly. Thank you. So it's not like, uh, for example, one idea in one chapter and that's done. No, like the uh, general ideas discussed or shown to us throughout the whole book. How can we find them? by reading every chapter. Not only the chapter is the story, the plot lines, but by focusing on the vocabulary, by focusing on the title of the chapters, we can find out what the themes are, right? So yes, you are absolutely right. It's something like an uh, idea, something like an uh, uh, like, like action, something like an event or a system or a, like a system of thought that uh, like, like happens throughout the whole book right, from the beginning to the end. We can do a close reading of the words, of the phrases, of the ideas, or of the chapter titles, and we can find out what a character does or doesn't uh, do, or what a character says or doesn't say, um, to find out what the themes are. Like, you, you could have guessed, or you could have, like, uh, told by now what, what some of the themes in this book are. Justice or injustice, right? Um, racial issues, the ones we can see in every single chapter that is being discussed or shown by characters. There is this concept in English literature, showing versus telling. So showing is like we are hearing the dialogues, monologues, and the, the, the omniscient narrator is telling us what the characters are doing. So I would be like understanding myself. Telling is like the character, the first person narration, narrator, for example, is telling me about it. So if Scout shows her like, like dissatisfaction, shows her like um, anger towards the social issues or racial issues and the society, she's telling me about it. This is how I can tell um, about like, like the theme of the story of the book. So some of the themes that we can uh, talk about there are more, by the way, uh, include tolerance, racial uh, prejudice, courage, justice, and social and caste system. So as for tolerance, what are your thoughts? What, what do we mean when we say tolerance? Any ideas? Are characters tolerant or intolerant? <clears throat> I think that some characters are tolerant for example the main character scout i think that she's uh tolerant because she sort of at the beginning she sort of embraces the uh -huh. hardships that she goes through uh-huh uh-huh or she's learning how to be tolerant yeah. right exactly thank you so it's for every character in the book that okay um, I need to learn. I need to cope up with the um, issues going on this in the city that I'm living in, in Mekong. I need to learn how to like tolerate them. Atticus, he knows everything's wrong with the society, with this, with the, let's say, justice system, but he has to tolerate it because he can't do much more. He's not like passive, but uh, the, the idea, like, 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 it's so very, uh, uh, in like, let's say, rooted in the society that it's, dif it's difficult to change. Yes, Tiana, please. I think some characters, for example, Aunt Alexandra was her name. Mm -hmm. I think she didn't tolerate, like, for example, Tom. Uh-huh, uh-huh, thank you, yes. Yeah. Definitely. 
it's not only about tolerance, but not, characters not being able to tolerate their, some other characters because of different reasons. Fantastic, thank you. Okay, very well, let me do something.